Hello and welcome to uh, FEM Expert. Into this tutorial, we're going to show you how to perform a transit analysis and compare the differences between the ramp it and the step load ramp and step load options. So we're going to go here into the ANSYS interface. For the simulation, we're going to use a simple structure that we have here defined. So it's going to be a beam uh, made out of steel with the restriction on the key point one. So we're gonna just copy and paste uh, here this information. Here you have the, the structure. The section, we're gonna define it by um, by command line two. So the, the section type is a beam, a solid with a 520, so 20 millimeters uh, round thickness. So we're gonna just copy all of these, assigning, here we're assigning the section, we're selecting the, si the meshing size of 0 0.1 and we're meshing the line. So we're gonna look at it in a second. E shape from a 1.1, we're gonna replot it. So this is what we have here, a, a bar that's one meter le in length. It's embedded at the end and it has that uh, uh, circular section. So we're gonna take the E shape one, we're gonna take the E shape, we're gonna make it zero, zero and we're gonna replot the, the element and the line. So what we normally have is, um, what we normally would do is go into this, this end type, and then the stuff would be the solution, analysis type, new analysis, transient, okay, and the full mode. So we explained in, in a previous tutorial how to perform a transient analysis. We have here the same transient analysis, but the difference, we're gonna explain the difference of this specific option which is the transient step loading or the ramp loading so the best way to explain these differences is to perform an analysis so that's what we're going to do so the kbc0 which is here it's the ramped so it's the ramped transient effect okay we're going to use the ramped so this one is going to be for the ramped we're going to do the solution with 10 sub steps we're gonna uh, so save every sub step on a ramp and it's gonna be zero, then to one G at 1.5 seconds, from 1.5 to two seconds it's gonna go down and then the simulation is gonna go to four seconds. So we're gonna do this and copy all of this stuff. The solution is done. So for this situation, we're gonna go to time his post-processing. I'm gonna pull the window here and we're gonna plot for the degree of freedom solution, the Z displacement of the tip. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna graph the data. So what we have here is that the, on the Z direction, the tip is going down from zero to one. We can compare here with the information that we introduced from zero to one second, that will be uh, this. We have no load then you know, on a ramped way, which means from zero, it goes to one minus, uh, to 9.81, well, this is the acceleration, so this will be the displacement. Uh, we, uh, we apply the load of one G from one to 1 1.5 seconds. So here we have for one, for one, 1 1.5, it will be the maximum displacement, then from 1.5 to two, the maximum displacement, and then the beam is vibrating by itself because, well, we are, applying this load dynamically. Also here you can see that it kind of has some wobbly effect on the Z direction because the beam is also semi vibrating while it's going up and down. So now we're gonna change this to KVC1, which would be making it into a step load. So we're gonna copy and paste. We don't have to be here, we have to be here. And if you look at the solution controls, you're gonna see that's a step loading and we're gonna apply the same thing. We're gonna do the same thing. You can go to L plot. We're gonna copy and paste. The only thing that we changed was applying a step load rather than a ramp load. And we're gonna look at the time he's post processing again. We're gonna plot the results, the component Z displacement, the same node, okay. And now we're gonna look at the results. So now what they happen, what, have, what do we have here? It's a completely different reaction of the structure. What's happening here is that because the load is ramped, 
it goes instantly at 1.5 from the minimum value to the maximum value. So it will be the maximum displacement in this case. This determines in the, um, in the structure a lot of vibrations. This will be vibrating quite a, quite a bit and these vibrations will be continuing to go until we release the structure and it will be going into this transient with a very low damping coefficient from the ANSI default material going towards a, a stabilization point. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go here and we're gonna put a hundred steps on every simulation to see how this thing will change to have a little bit of more uh, resolution. So we're gonna go here again, paste that and wait for all of the simulations to be done. And we're gonna repeat the time he's processing. We're gonna go here, we're gonna plot the Z displacement. Okay, okay, and we're going to plot this. And as you can see, well, uh, you we're, we're taking we're being able to sample a lot more points and from here the structure is kind of getting crazy the displacement values because these would have a almost an infinite value of acceleration the structure is having a very intense reaction that's also visible here we're gonna go and plot we're gonna go and animate like we did on the previous tutorial to see what's happening in some way so Although the structure, the simulation would work, it would not be extremely useful or extremely realistic unless we want to have a very, very extensive, very, very strong reaction of the structure. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and we're gonna not do the scaling. We, I think we can even do a zero scaling, a one scaling. So you can see that the structure goes up and down quite a bit compared to the previous tutorial so well this is what we would obtain from this simulation and also it keeps going because there is a lot of energy introducing the system I'm gonna go once more here and we're gonna look at this result because what we did it was introducing a an acceleration or any variable almost in an instant which would kind of make it infinite the structure started having a huge vibration we can look at that by looking at the data properties and changing the axis from zero to two so we're going to do this from zero to two and we're going to plot again and you can see here what's happening although we apply this value of acceleration from zero to one which was almost almost instantly it actually took place in the next we can see here in the next step after one so uh, in the next step after one is when the the structure had its uh, all of the um, acceleration applied the structure started vibrating and then we, we take it down to zero it's continuous vibrating so that's what's happening with it so that would be it for today's tutorial we hope you were able to see what the differences are for the for the KVC option or the ramp or step uh, transient simulation effect. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you do, please subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Thank you for your attention.